Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As we discussed in our previous videos, sand casting is not suitable for components which require high dimensional accuracy and smooth surface finish. To overcome this, special casting processes are employed. One of such casting processes is the shell molding. In this video, we'll talk about shell molding, its process, advantages, disadvantages, and applications. Before we move into our topic, you guys must be aware of the basic principles of special casting processes. If you haven't watched our video on it, check the link in the description below. Are you guys wondering who this person is? Well, he is Johann Kroning, a German engineer and entrepreneur. In 1944, he developed a new process in his foundry which became known as the Kroning process. This process of manufacturing parts with good dimensional accuracy and surface finish eventually became known as shell molding or shell mold casting. Shell molding is an expendable mold casting process in which resin covered sand is used to manufacture the mold. In this process, a shell-like molding cavity is obtained, because of which this process came to be known as shell molding. Using this process, mechanical parts with high dimensional accuracy and smooth surface finish can be obtained. When compared to sand casting, shell molding has a higher productivity rate and lower labor cost. Are you wondering why? Well, to understand that, we'll have to study the entire sand molding process. Without any further ado, let's get into it. The first step in the shell casting process is pattern making. A metallic pattern of the desired shape is made in two pieces. Typically, iron and steel are used for making patterns. Besides these, aluminum is used for low volume production and graphite for casting reactive material. After the pattern is made, the mold is prepared. This is done by heating each half of the pattern to 175 to 370 degrees Celsius. This heated pattern is clamped to a dump box. This dump box contains a mixture of sand and resin binder. The dump box is inverted and the sand resin mixture is allowed to be coated on the pattern. Thanks to the high temperature of the pattern, the sand resin mixture hardens and forms the shell structured mold around the pattern. The pattern is then removed from the mold and to facilitate this removal, a lubricant is coated over the pattern at the start of the process. Ejector pins are also used to help in easy removal of the pattern. As soon as both halves of the mold are obtained, they are assembled to form the complete shell mold. This is done by joining them and clamping them properly. The shell mold is then housed inside a flask in which further process takes place. It must be noted that the cores are placed inside the mold before the assembly. Also, the shell mold is supported all reinforced inside the flask with the help of backing materials such as shot, sand and gravel. After the two halves of the mold are assembled, the molten metal is poured into the mold cavity. This molten metal is then allowed to cool down and solidify inside the mold cavity. As the molten metal solidifies, it takes the shape of the required casting. After the molten metal has cooled down, the mold is broken and the final casting is obtained. So this is how various components like crankshaft and other automotive components are manufactured using shell molding. Now let's move on to the advantages of shell molding. As we already know, shell molding provides parts with high dimensional accuracy and smooth surface finish. And this process has a higher productivity rate and lower labor cost when compared to sand casting. However, when there are advantages, there are disadvantages too. Am I right? Well, the disadvantages of sand molding arise due to the requirement of a gating system and resins. For pouring molten metal into the mold, a gating system is required and it must be a part of the pattern. This is because a gating system ensures smooth flow of molten metal from the ladle to the mold cavity. This gating system is expensive and increases the operational cost. Resins, which are required for binding sand particles, are also expensive. However, only small quantities of resins are required for the process. With this, we will bring our session on shell molding to a conclusion. Today, we talked about the shell molding process, its applications, advantages, and disadvantages. In our upcoming videos, we will talk about more special casting processes. Stay tuned and stay safe. Until the next one, bye.